Hey guys, so today I'm a bad actor, and I don't mean that in the way that you might think. So I recently got hired at this company, and I'm pretty sure the network is vulnerable, and I'm going to try and infiltrate it, and I'm going to bring you guys along to show you how I do that. Let's go. So as you can see, I think through this door, I can actually get into the network. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do that, but I think I can figure it out. So let's try and get in. Um, yeah, the door seems to be locked. Let's try something else. Yeah, I don't think this is my door. Sorry. Okay guys, so we're going to try this again, but this time I've took off my mask and I've got this white little tag on me. I think I'll be able to get in this time. Let's try. Yeah, this is definitely my door. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little dorky intro. I know I'm not the best actor and I decided to have a little bit of fun with a green screen and hopefully you guys kind of can summarize what this video is going to be about. Today's video is going to be about ZTNA for Fortinet. Now if you've watched my channel long enough you know that I love Cisco, PFSense, etc. Um, but in a corporate environment that we have that I manage, um, I use Fortinet devices along with Cisco. Now, Fortinet has something that's really unique with their ZTNA. And it's actually really easy to set up, and I haven't seen a lot of videos on this, so I decided to make one to kind of demo, and hopefully I can do it a little bit of justice and how you can use Fortinet's ZTNA. Let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is head over to my FortiGate just to show you guys how I have that set up. Now this is one of the branches um, edge firewalls and we're going to head over to interfaces to just show I have a LAN interface, I have a um, EP LAN interface. So I'm inside of my firewall policy and my firewall policy out of the box is very simple. I just have an inside to outside policy that allows traffic to pass uh, from my inside LAN interface to my outside LAN interface. Now this is not a WAN interface. This leads to our co-location. Uh, so I just want to make that very clear. That's why I'm not doing any NAT or any security profiles. I do all of that on the co-location edge. Let's head over to FortiClient. Now FortiClient's uh, EMS is really cool because it lets us set up uh, profiles, it lets us set up rules, and essentially this is, we'll think of it as an orchestration uh, for our clients, agents that we install on the computer, where we can then specify rules. So what we're going to do is come over here and create a new tag excuse me, we're going to create a new tag and we're going to say zero trust tagging rules and we're going to click add. And once I get this uh, here, I'm going to create a tag and I'm going to name it YouTube. And then from here, this is where we actually create that tag. And I already have one created, which is YouTube. And I'm going to specify uh, an optional comment. And I do recommend this for administrative purposes. We're going to say allow YouTube and we're going to create a new rule. Now from here we can specify the OS type. For my case it's going to be Windows and we're going to specify a bunch of different options here. Um, in our case, excuse me, we can specify a bunch of different options but in our case we're going to do an IP range and I'm going to put in the IP address of the particular user that I'm going to allow to watch YouTube. So we're going to hit save but I do want to remind you here, you can add more options uh, so you can specify multiple uh, rules to tag your endpoints. Uh, so let me fix this right quick and we're going to hit save. And so that's going to create a new tag of YouTube. And if we head over to uh, Zero Trust Tag Monitor, this is going to take just a second, but it should populate here in a moment with that new tag once it detects that that user matches that tag. So let's give it just a moment. 
Let's go ahead and refresh, and sure enough, it's detected that we have one user that matches that rule that we set up, and now it's tagging them with a tag of YouTube. Now, you can have multiple tagging rules again. You can have multiple tags signed to a user. So if this user worked in the IT department, we could also tag them there. Or if this user should have access to a web server, we can tag them there. So let's head over to the firewall. We're going to go ahead and log in here. And I've went ahead and created a policy on this firewall to block YouTube. So let me show you what we have. So at the beginning of the video, you saw I had the inside to outside, I had the outside to inside, and now I have a new rule that is the TNA block. So let me show you what that looks like. So all I did was is I just created a block all policy for a wildcard of youtube.com uh, so all i did was is i went over here and hit create and i created a new uh, fqdn wildcard of youtube.com which is pulling all those addresses so i just hit deny click ok and i can see i've already got some traffic generated here let's head over and on this user's pc when i try pinging youtube it doesn't work As you can see, the request times out. If I come over here and try watching a video, dismiss that. You can see that the video is not loading. We'll try going back to YouTube here. And you can see nothing's really working. So I'm going to allow this user based on that new ZTNA tag that I set. So you're going to want to make sure under Fabric Connectors that you have your Forta Client uh, EMS Cloud synced up and with the latest information. And then from there, we're going to head over to Policy and Objects, ZTNA, ZTNA Tags. And under here, you should see that new tag that we just created. Now, in my case, it's not showing up, so it's likely not synced up with 40 EMS. So I'll be right back as soon as that pops up. We'll continue going. Okay, and we are back. So that took a little bit. I wanted to quickly go over um, the issue that I had with my tag syncing because maybe someone else will run into this. Um, but what I did was, is I came to the administration guide for 7.0.1 and I made sure everything was connected up. But oddly enough for me, um, everything was correct. So what I ended up doing was I deleted the uh, Fortinet device, the FortiGate out of the Fabric devices and reauthorized it. And everything seems to be working. I have that tag showing up on the root firewall so let's go into one of our branches and see if the tag is showing up under here um, because i deleted this one uh, so let's see what happens yeah so i don't have any ztna tag showing up so briefly let's go over how to do that so we're going to go to security fabric fabric connector and here we should see forta ems and it's not showing that it's working so we're going to go back to our devices over here and refresh and i see that the device is waiting to be approved we're going to authorize it and now when i go back over here and refresh it should start working so initially my issue was um, i had each one of my devices uh, synced up to the root fabric device which is this device here and this device wasn't able to communicate and because of that I wasn't able to pull those tags in so I should be able to now so let's go up to policy objects ZTNA and ZTNA tags and here in a moment this should refresh and I should have all of those tags back let me go back and make sure that we are synced and ready to go it's loading and this message was really helpful because it's telling me that it's pulling my settings from the root fortigate device and when i saw that one wasn't connected that was when i knew um, what my issue was and we are set up so let's go see if those tags have filtered through the tna tags still so far we're not seeing anything let's give it a little bit And there we go. So it took a little bit to load um, those tags in. 
uh, but we do have those now. So you can see we have that YouTube tag. And so now what we're going to do is create a policy to allow that tag. So we're going to do ZTNA allow and we're going to tick ZTNA and we're going to do IP Mac filtering. And here we're going to specify that tag with IP. And we're going to say the incoming interface is once again our LAN. The outgoing interface is our outside to EP LAN. We're going to say the source for this. We could do a user group or an address. In this case, we're just going to hit all uh, because what we're doing is matching on that tag. Uh, so the source could be coming from anywhere, going to the destination of all. Um, here we're going to specify the service that we are going to allow, which would be YouTube. And here the service, we could say all, or we could be specific. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to say all. We're going to take NAT off, and we're going to enable the policy. So now what's going to happen is, is we're going to drag this up above. So we should have an allow policy that's going to filter for the tag and it's gonna allow to YouTube. And if it doesn't have that tag, it's gonna hit the next policy, which blocks altogether. So we're going to head back over to our endpoint and we should be able to watch YouTube now. Uh, so there we go. Let's go ahead and search for my channel. See if I can find myself, if I can spell my name. And I'm the first thing that pops up. But again, you can see that it is now allowing us to watch YouTube. And just to prove that that policy is working, I'm going to pause that. We're going to go back over here to the allow. We're going to edit and we're going to scroll down and disable the policy. Click OK. And now we're going to go back and try watching this video. So let's refresh the page. And you can see it's just going to sit here and spin. But as soon as I go back over here and allow the policy again, so we're going to go back and hit edit and we're going to enable the policy. This video should now load and start playing. So as you can see, that's pretty simple. Um, I'm a really big fan of this. Uh, I can also come back under here and update the statistics. And once the firewall starts realizing that that policy is being ticked and the user is watching, these statistics should uh, start updating. So it's very simple to set up. Um, I'm going to put in the description box uh, several of these articles because it's really easy to set this up. And if you guys want to get this going in maybe, let's say, a lab environment, it's really easy to do. So what you can do is you can head over to uh, Fortinet's website. So we'll go to Fortinet.com. And once we get here, you will see a bunch of different things, but Zero Trust Access and then ZTNA. So this does require a license, but it's really, really cost effective depending on the amount of users that you're going to have. And because it works really well, it's really easy to understand how it works. And you can even get further in depth than what I did here using proxies and whatnot. Um, so this, again, is just a quick and easy, dirty example. But if you guys want to get some hands on experience learning this, what you can do is you can head up to their website at Fortinet.com. And once you get under here, you can take a look at the ZTNA. This will explain a little bit about uh, how it works. And you can see here through this documentation, you can learn a little bit more about it. But what's really nice is, is Forta EMS comes with a 30 day free trial. Uh, so let's search for Forta EMS. And here we should find it. So you can sign up for the Forta EMS free trial. I think you get 30 days or actually I stand corrected here. It says the trial version is not time limited and you can let it manage up to three clients. So I'm guessing if you have, um, you know, less than three clients, you could probably use this long term instead of even buying a license, which is pretty neat. I may be wrong there. Um, I would recommend contacting the Fortinet reps and finding that out. But again, you do get a untimed license for up to three clients. And this is some of the stuff you can do. And one of that 
is endpoint integration with the security fabric, which will allow you to do the ZTNA like I just did. The only difference is, is this would be installed on a Windows server. I think they have a minimum OS requirement of at least Windows 2012 server, or I think Windows 7. I may be wrong there, um, but I think I tried setting up the on-prem version on a Windows server that was older than Windows 2012 and I couldn't get it to work. Uh, so make sure you check out what the uh, requirements are for the OS to get this set up. But anyways, you would set that up and then you would set up your fabric connector to point um, to the Forda EMS that is on-prem instead of, in my case, I set mine to point to my cloud instance. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I know this was a quick and easy video. I didn't get too in depth of how the protocols work or how any of it works. And I do apologize about that, but I did want to make a short demo video of ZTNA from Fortinet because I think it is a powerful solution to specify policies based on tagging rules that you specify so that you can allow certain users to access certain server groups. You can block certain users from accessing certain websites, or you can do a quick and easy policy like I did if you just want to play around in a lab environment. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I greatly appreciate each and every of you watching. Everyone who comments and reaches out to me daily, I really appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing or leaving a comment down below with any questions, and I'll try and get with you as soon as possible. Thank you.